please give it up for amazing, amazing, amazing Amber Town Ian. So Amber, take it away, girl. I love it. Jana says I, she doesn't know where I'm from. I sometimes don't know where I'm from. So, uh, but I, I, my assistant, I got to mention this, why the accolades were a little late to you. She was updating them. And I'm a person that like, I don't super love accolades other than it gives you the reason of why Janice has given me the platform to speak to you is that there's it's earned. It's not just given. And so, but I always say heart collades are ones in which the reason why I choose someone. And um, I've always chosen Janice by, uh, by nature. I mean, I think I can remember going to her office when I was a brand new consultant, 19 years old. And I believe it, there's a plaque on your desk that says, ask questions, don't give answers. And I think it was at your desk. I think so. I don't know. I think it was at that time and, and it taught me so much, but I remember just looking up to her. I remember when I was a little girl going to lunch with her and she had just picked up a new Cadillac. Now I'm talking little girl. I probably was like eight and we went to lunch with her when we were in California and her trunk was one of those trunks that you sat down, like you just put it down and then it grabbed it and pulled it down. Um, and I remember watching the trunk shut going, <gasps> one day I'm not going to have to slam a trunk. It will just like grab it. Now I think about that with cupboard doors. When you have, you know, four kids, you want those soft closing cupboard doors. Uh, but I did start my Mary Kay business 25 years ago. Um, for more, more than that, it's been most, mostly my whole life, but I'm not going to share that portion because we don't have time for that. But my mom actually joined Mary Kay when I was just three years old. So I um, remember vividly her leaving for her very first appointment because she had her very first training and um, because she had never left us like ever to do the grocery store or anything. And so I remember it. And I also remember her teaching us how to set goals. And so one of the pluses of being raised in a Mary Kay home and also by a top Mary Kay leader and on to be a national sales director was there is one thing I wish I could give everybody, whether you're in Mary Kay or you're not in Mary Kay, is that the process is worth it. Like I never question in my mind ever, is this worth it? Yes, it's worth it because I watched it from the inside out. I got to see all of the benefits of my mom working from home, all the flexibility, all the extra income, the things that, that her choices afforded us as a family. So therefore at 18 years old, I made the decision actually because of my father um, to do Mary Kay. And everything in my life has always stemmed with one question. And the question is not, can I do this? It was, how can I do this? You see, my mom and I are very, very different. Um, she was a former hair, hairdresser. I was in college on a, on a volleyball scholarship, wore no makeup whatsoever. Actually, I wore mascara, but my idea of taking it off was like this at night. Uh, it was like rolling my lashes. Now I know it's so bad for you, but that was my idea of taking it off. And I was just a complete tomboy jock that grew up in the shop, turning wrench with my dad. And so I didn't see... Um, I didn't see myself like my mom. She was very, very, she's so very creative. She could be an interior decorator. She's insane in her creativity. But my question then when I was 18 years old is how can I be successful at this? And still I'm not like my mom. How can I be successful with 22 credits I was taking in school, working two jobs and on the college volleyball team was how can I do this? And so I would encourage you is to look at your obstacles, whether you're a consultant or you're on as a guest and think, how can I do this? Not can I, because how can I brings hope and faith? Can I is doubt and that you're not enough. And so I grew up with this thought all the time is not, can I do it? Is how can I do it? And so at 18 years old, I said, yes. And I um, left my college, left college six months later. And three months after that went full time with Mary Kay. And I've never worked for somebody else again. So when the pandemic hit, I was used to working from home a little bit, um, but I did get married um, a couple of years later um, and acquired two bonus children and had my, my first two biological children, my only biological children, um, Cooper and Avery. And in that time, I was married for 12 years in a very unhealthy, toxic, abusive marriage. And it wasn't a question of, well, when I have a healthy marriage or when things get better, um, because it was survival. It was how can I still be successful in this business and provide an income to, to feed my kids, but I can't leave my children alone with their dad at night. Um, how can I do this? And I learned to be flexible and work my business. And little did I know how numb you become to the abuse that you're in. And the day that I left, um, my kids and I left with $11 in my pocket. 
and we rebuilt. And again, it wasn't, how, it wasn't, can I do this and build? It was, how can I do it? Because the next two and a half years were some of the most intensive years of my life of battling for my freedom and my children and myself um, acquired $150,000 in attorney debt that I would do over and over again. I always say it was my, my um, college education of life. And, um, and that was something that um, didn't get paid off until like four years ago, but praise God it was. And I look at, I look at it and some people would think, oh, you need to go get another job. No, it was how can I still be an amazing mom, a successful businesswoman, a child of the most high, high king and fight this battle that I've been called to that I've been called with a year and a half uh, restraining order for my, to protect my children and I, it wasn't, can I still do Mary Kay? It was, how can I still do Mary Kay? And it, during that time, there's, I think it was my seventh car, my seventh Cadillac was earned, which was my um, ninth car. And I remember this was the only Cadillac I ever earned that took the whole entire period to earn, which was six months. And it was the last day of the last month of qualifying. And if anyone's ever walked through a very dark, heavy season, there had been a lot of negativity spoken at me. There had been a lot of exposure. There had been a lot of um, hurt when somebody I believe in marriage so strong walked through something so treacherous and was very visible to everybody. Um, and there was days in my gratitude journal, all I wrote was I was a I was grateful. I was above ground and breathing. And, and yet on that day that we finished earning that Cadillac, it had so little to do about the car, but had so much to do about our victory in life. And I remember I just kind of collapsed on my office floor, my kids and I's new little home and Cooper was only three then. And I started crying and it still brings emotion to me today because he remembers this. And because it was an emotion thing, probably for him to watch his mom cry. And he's like, mom, mom, why are you crying? And he still would be that way to me today. He's 14 now, but he's um, a little bit of a softy towards his mom. And I said, he goes, why are you sad? I said, I'm not sad. I am claiming back what the enemy came to, came to still, kill, steal, and destroy. God is bringing back. And that was the promise is that he is bringing back that victory and that influence. And it was the first day that I felt like the talons were out. If you've ever walked through a struggle like that, but again, it wasn't wasn't, can I do this? It was, how can I do this? Because you see, I couldn't put my kids in childcare during that time because I had to protect them. My daughter who was in elementary school at the time had, they had the school had an exit route planned for her that if someone were to come to the school that they knew how to get her off campus safely and protect her. And that was what I was living in, but still providing for my family and children, no child support, no spousal maintenance, no anything. And, and I think as a single mom, one of the things you always um, fear is, is being like that you need people. And I think it's a, such a sad thing. Like you feel like you don't want to be a burden on people. So you just do it all. And so again, it just became, how can I, how can I still be this mom that I desire to be with high influence on my kids and lead a unit and be a Christian and everything that I am and walk this battle, but it was something part of my journey. And uh, then about a year later, I met my husband, Joe, which is why Janice doesn't know where I live anymore, uh, because I met him and he lived in Phoenix. I lived in Seattle. We, I met him at a family birthday party and he asked for my number. And my personality is I'm not giving him a number, but he was from Phoenix. So what could it hurt? I literally told my friend that night, I said, if I marry this dude, I'll make your, I, I will make you a bridesmaid, mind you, the friend I was telling was six, five male. And, um, I said, if I, if I end up marrying him, I'll make you a bridesmaid. Well, three years later, we had dated long distance for three years. Again, how can I do this and still have a relationship long distance, be a single mom, all the, all the, and, um, we got, we blended our four kids. He moved to Seattle where he said he was never going to move back to for two years. And then um, his job in management of Southwest Airlines moved us out of Kansas City, City, Missouri. And I laugh at that because of all places, neither one of us knew anybody in Kansas City, Missouri. And so if you say, how can I like do this? I don't know a lot of people. I don't have any connections. Try zero connections is what I had in Kansas City, Missouri. And so I built there not knowing one single person. I had over 70 facial boxes out. I had referrals everywhere. When I left Kansas City, Missouri, I gave away 2000 leads. And now this was one month 
before COVID hit that we moved to, to Phoenix, Arizona, not knowing any, I didn't know anyone here. And, but I was smart enough to why I don't know, bring 2000 referrals that I had in my hands. Um, and I had 2000 referrals. And the only reason I didn't give those away to my local consultants is because they were referred to me and I felt kind of weird giving them away. And literally that started our virtual business here was all of those referrals became my first fa facials. And now we've done over 500 um, virtual facials is what I've done. And again, the ringing tone through my whole entire life is how can I do this? Instead of looking at your life as of all the obstacles, all the setbacks, the abuse, the negativity, the people that say, well, you couldn't even sell Girl Scout cookies. Um, how could you think you're going to sell Mary Kay is how can I do it? How can I do it? If I've never went live virtually, not, well, I've never done that. I don't know how to do that. How can I, instead of, can I, because again, can I brings doubt and disbelief and that you're not enough, but how can I brings faith and hope and that there's something more here. And for me, I, uh, the, the month that was my highest commission check, actually the amount of money that was deposited. And I don't know why somebody needs to hear this part because when I was still $125,000 in attorney debt, because I paid down some of it, um, I started my visualization cards. Now I grew up learning visualization because my mom was a Mary Kay sales director and I had a great volleyball coach. And so I literally understood the power of visualization so strong. But when you're walking through a dark time, sometimes you forget those things that make life better because you're just in survival mode. Well, I started making my, my, um, my, little visualization cards again. And all it is, is I go through them a three minutes every single day when I'm doing my Bible study and prayer time. And one of them said to have $50,000 deposited into my checking account. Now, I didn't want it to be like I sold something. I wanted it to be that Mary Kay deposited it into there. Now, I wasn't at that level at that time, but just four years after writing it in my visual visualization book or my flip cards, um, Mary Kay canceled our first trip, which was our million dollar year. And my assistant just put that bonus in there. And I thought she was asking me a tax question of how do you write it? And I said, well, you just write it. So it has the most tax write-offs. And she goes, no, it's going on your accolades. I'm like, oh, so it was both years were that kind of bonus. But that year specifically, my husband said he saw it before I did, because I was in my office working. He goes, is there a reason why there was just $54,000 deposited into our checking account from Mary Kay? And my first question was, is there a reason why you're questioning that? And he's like, nope, I'm good. I'm good. And that was the combination of my commission check bonuses for doing million. They paid us for the trip that we didn't get to take. And then all these other crazy bonuses, which I didn't even know existed. And so it was something, it was $54,000 were deposited. And I don't say that to impress you, to, but, but to impress upon you, there was a day I left with $11 in my pocket. And the question wasn't, can I still be successful with how can I? And so I don't know where you're at in your life or your Mary Kay career, but if there's one thing I can impress upon you in everything I share is to stop asking, can I do something, but start asking, how can I, because it will make the biggest, biggest difference. So here we are today. My unit is now in 29 different States and it is something a virtual world. Like, like Janice has said, my last, I have another party at seven 30 and at my seven 30, my time, um, there'll be 19 different States represented on that party. And that would have never happened before virtual world. So, but that's me in a nutshell, Janice. So I'll turn it back to you. Oh my gosh, Amber, you were 